Okay, it's another multimeter review. This is Digitech DT4000GC. The model number has been marked on the box. The box doesn't include picture or feature list of this multimeter. But that isn't a problem when ordering from online. This multimeter comes with English manual. It is very brief, but it is English. There's the multimeter and we will have a look at that later. There are some accessories and again some notes from Frankie. This time I bought this, so I paid this. This is not a sponsored review. You can go to 99centhobbies.com to find the link to this eBay store. This multimeter comes with CD, which has the PC software, but I'm going to use Sigrog or other open source software, so I'm not going to use that CD. The temperature probe is this rod type probe, unlike the probes that have come with other multimeters that I've reviewed. This probe has the same problem as the Unity's temperature probe. There isn't clear color indicator on which is the positive and which is the negative side on the plug that goes in the multimeter, but it's easy to mark the negative side with Sharpie or something like that. Then there is this USB cable. It has 3.5 mm plug on the one end. It goes into the multimeter, one of the different looking input jacks. And on the other end of the cable there's USB plug which includes the PCB. I've already taken this apart, so if you buy one, it won't come apart this easily. The PCB has CH340 based USB to UART converter, and therefore drivers can be found easily if it doesn't install automatically. And then there are these probes, and I have to mention that these aren't the same as what have been supplied with this multimeter previously. So these probes are not the same that you might have seen on the other reviews. They are really soft considering the price of this multimeter which was less than 40 bucks, maybe 39 or something like that. The plug on the multimeter side is just like on the NEG probe, but the tip is gold plated. It should keep them on good condition and have low resistance. Tips that have some cheap material on the coating might get oxidized and have quite high resistance, so gold plating is really nice touch. Now let's look at the build quality of the multimeter. First of all, the plastic feels very cheap. It probably won't survive drops like the fluke or something, but this is cheap multimeter, so nothing that I wouldn't have expected. The stand feels quite weak, but when tested, I can rotate the selector switch and push the buttons without tipping the meter over, so I guess that's okay. Now, the selector switch can be quite easily rotated to middle of two positions, but by accident that's really unlikely to happen. Another thing about the selector switch is that there are two off positions, one on both ends. That's really nice if one is using this for current measurements, so you don't have to rotate the selector switch all the way around. The serial output seems to be on by default. I would like to be off by default and enabled by pressing the button, not enabled by default and disabled by the button. Now let's test how fast this is on resistance. So how long it takes to show 0 ohms when connecting the probes together. Now that's pretty fast compared to other multimeters that I've reviewed on the same price range. The continuity mode is one of the good things on this multimeter. The probes have the gold plated tips like I said, and the continuity mode is instant, it's not latched, so if you have very very fast short, it will beep very very fast, so you might miss that. Next up is the accuracy on the voltage range. I have the 10 volt and 2.048 volt voltage references. Let's first test the lower one. It settles at 2.046 or 7, so no more than two counts of. Then the 10 volt reference, it gives 10.01, so that's only one count of as well. Now the overshoot, which happens when you go from lower range to upper range on auto ranging mode, that does happen when connecting probes to 10 volt voltage, you can read 15 volts at one point on the display before it goes to 10 volts. So there is some overshoot and it does happen on the 2.048 volts as well. It's reading 3 point something at one point. Now let's take this multimeter apart. First remove the batteries and you can see there's metal insert where the screw goes. Because if there wasn't a metal insert, the battery changing process would wear out the plastic over time. That's really great. 
and that grating is just pushing the batteries down. Now one thing I don't like is that the battery wires are visible in there. While changing the batteries they might wear off at some point and it would need resoldering. But I think by being careful when changing the batteries that's just fine. Now there are two screws on the bottom of the meter. On the back of the meter there's some metal tape and spring that touches it, so that's preventing some interference from getting into the meter. Not much more there. So let's look at the input section. Or first, there are these metal inserts on the screws that have to be removed when changing this ceramic 10 amp fuse or this 500 mA glass fuse. So even though you have to take the multimeter apart, change the fuses, the screws aren't going to shake into the plastic. And another thing near the bottom, this second PCB is where the USB cable goes and it is optically isolated from the rest of the circuit. Now the input section. There's the PTC, but not much more. There aren't any mobs or insulation slots or anything similar. So input protection wise this is very basic meter. And the input checks are these cheap ones which aren't solid, they are like C shaped, there's a slot on them. Now what else on the PCB? There's the beeper, where you can add blue tag or something to quiet it down. There I can see few trimmer potentiometers which can be used to calibrate the meter. The IC on the chip is known, it's the FS9721LP3, so there's datasheet available, so if your meter needs calibration you can take the datasheet and try to find out which trimmer is used for each of the functions. Now let's take the PCB out, so there are one screw on there, two on the bottom, the four screws holding the battery cover, and also two more screws that I didn't remember to point out. So let's take those away. There aren't metal inserts, because there's no reason for end user to remove the PCB. Now let's take the battery cover out and of course the PCB won't come off because there are these two screws that I didn't remember to point out. And then it kind of felt like there was more screws. But no, the input checks just were so tightly on the plastic that I have to use screwdriver to pull them out. And before looking at the PCB on the other side, there is space about the drop, so I'll push it on its place. And there's not much to say on the front half of the body. Now the back side of the PCB. There's some flux residue. Soldering quality isn't the best. There are a few solder joints that I would have soldered better. For example, this input jack. On this side there isn't much solder, but on the other side I believe it is soldered quite okay. And this fuse holder, of course that's just one quarter of the side of the holder, but I would have done that better anyway. So overall this multimeter has nice features, it's quite fast and accurate, but inward protection is next to none.